at Steve Flock, CEO of CeeLo. Is that right? Correct. Jo joins us now in the studio. Morena. Morena, Will. Hey, the, the NHS in the UK has banned the use of WhatsApp. We've had these recent cyber attacks which crippled the Waikato DHB, for example. What's so dangerous about healthcare professionals using the likes of WhatsApp? Look, uh, WhatsApp is a social tool, so anyone can join it. Super easy to use. All you need is a phone number to join. Um, which comes with its risks, right? It's very easy to send something to the, the wrong number by mistake or add a digit or, or drop a digit really easily. Um, it's only end-to-end -end encrypted from point A to point B, so me and you are having a conversation, it looks after all the data in the middle. But WhatsApp don't bother encrypting the app on the device level, so you lose your phone in Uber or a taxi, someone picks it up, very easy to get into the device. And, and if you've got patient information like photos or, or messages there, that's where they, they can become a real risk. Um, and if that's not enough, uh, recently the European Court of Justice ruled that um, Facebook as a technology company did not provide adequate technology um, or protection for its data subject. Do we know how many people are actually, how many doctors out there are actually using WhatsApp? Because it is, a, it, it, we, we heard about it um, during union strikes and stuff like that in the UK as well, doctors organising around WhatsApp. Is there, is there, presumably there's a lot of this health data going through it. Yeah, look, it's not a um, New Zealand specific problem, it's a global problem as, as NHS pointed out and they banned WhatsApp last year in March. Um, British Medical Journal did a study recently and they found across all the developed nations it was almost 90% of medical professionals admitted to using some form of consumer messaging um, for their day, -to -jo day job at some point. Um, so it is rife. Hey, um, he quarter way ordering of the Māori health strategy contains nothing about data privacy and the government says, um, the health uh, ministry I should say, says it doesn't really look um, like it's going to investigate much more. Is that disappointing? Yeah, look, well I think it's, um, it is disappointing, definitely. Um, look, I, to, to give the government a little bit of credit, um, it is getting better and there's certainly a lot of reform around how do we look after um, you know, friends and, and whanau's data in the right way. Um, but look, we need to be doing better. I think um, if we look at the outside of New Zealand's borders, um, there's some really great tools and legislation available to, to push these sorts of, um, I guess, agendas. And, and New Zealand should be no different. Look at Waikato, it was a good example recently. Um, and, and it's just a matter of time time now before something is, is your tool something that would prevent something like Waikato or something in that sphere? Um, look, it's a little bit different. Um, we're not we're not an EMR or a medical record like 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 the Waikato incident. Um, but WhatsApp is a is a tool that's been known to be um, attractive to hackers. It's where a lot of malware can actually um, fall into place, and 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 so it's not it's not completely um, you know crazy to think that that could be an entry point. Um, and Celo would definitely help against that. How, do, how does the tool, uh, your tool work then? So um, Celo looks after a, a few key things. So we, we verify all of our users. So we look at identity, we look at profession, we look at workplace and make sure that we verify all those parameters. So if I'm talking to you, I know that I can trust you. Mm -hmm. um, we also look after the data on the, a device level. So take a patient image, share it with a colleague for advice. Um, we don't mix that with all the photographs that you might have of your friends and your whanau in your, in your library, you know, so holiday photo, holiday photo. Oh, big um, wound or something that you ask for advice. Um, so that's really important. And then last but not least, we can also integrate into the clinical record. So take a photograph and put it into the patient notes so that someone that comes back you know, a year or two years later and has a look at that episode of care can see, OK, what happened, what advice was given. Is it as easy to use as WhatsApp? Because doctors that you speak to will say, look, we're doing 60, 70, 80 hour uh, you know, weeks. We don't want to learn new technology. We just want something that works really flexibly. Does, is that what yours does? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I've heard that time and time again. I've got a dad as a GP. I married a doctor. I've got a sister that's a doctor. And um, they're the first to tell me when something doesn't work, right? Yep. So, um, Celo is built to be a really easy to use tool um, and we, we recently rolled out a site in Wales um, getting great uptake overseas and, and we've got in that site 85% of people use it every single day and 95% of the team use it weekly so it's very easy to use. Deployments in Aotearoa? Yes, yeah, so we've got four sites, Auckland DHB, Canterbury DHB, Hawke's Bay and then um, uh, West Coast and we've recently brought on ProCare, uh, Mercy Ascot Private Hospital as well. Um, but. You know, it's, there's a free version as well, so there's, there's really no barrier. It's, it's a chance to provide an alternative to staff um, in a safe way. And it's not limited to just doctors, you know, nursing, community care, um, they can all get on it. How do you make money if it's a free version? Yeah, so great question. And not selling it to Google Ads, <laughs> yeah, are you? Yeah, exactly. And this is a little bit different from, um, you know, WhatsApp and Facebook. They make all their money from advertising and data. Um, CELO has a free version to get people started and, and, and get familiar with the tool and, and get up to speed. Um, but we also have an enterprise tool. So, for example, I talked about integrating the photo and putting it into the notes. That's a license to do that. 
Um, low cost license, albeit, but but that does fund our model. Okay. How, uh, how, how much does this? Can you tell me this? How much does it cost? Yeah, for DHB a, to absolutely. Do this so um, probably the easiest way is for a small DHB. We're looking at something around a grand to two grand a month, yeah. um, right through to a, a bigger DHB would pay no more than one FTE. Um, so it's you know it's extremely affordable if we look at it compared to tools like you know the vaccine booking system. Um, even the EMRs across New Zealand, it's, it's a fraction of the cost, um, but it is a very important part, right? Communication is essential. Uh, you're on Fakata Māori, does it support that era Māori? Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and look, we're doing, um, we're doing all we can to, to work with, with the community and make the, the app more appropriate for, for certain demographics. And, and, and I think the other thing too is it helps Would it work for fun or order providers and that kind of thing? Look, absolutely. Anyone that's involved in the care of a patient can use CELO in it. And, and that's probably one of the big differentiators too, right? Like, think about in a hospital, you're just talking within the hospital groups. CELO helps break down those organisational barriers. So talking to someone in community, talking to someone in a hospital, doesn't matter. As long as you're on the tour, you can talk to each other about the patient. And you're a Kiwi business, yeah? Absolutely, 100% Kiwi owned and operated. Steve Flock, CEO of CELO, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Matewa.